Let's hope this works. What's happening guys? Welcome back to the Motorcycle Garage for another fun fueled episode of me dicking around with Easy composites, carbon fiber type, not carbon fiber tonight, uh, fiberglass. Um, so, hopefully this should be a quick one. Um, <laughs> say that about all my videos. That's what I say to my girlfriend too. Anyway, this should be a quick one um, because all I'm really gonna do tonight is clean up this mold. Uh, this mold, I'm not entirely impressed with it. I think I probably cocked something up along the way, but gonna clean up the mold slightly. Gonna make a few layers of carbon uh, fiberglass. Um, I've got some chopped strand, which is in the world's smallest box. Um, so we'll get that set up. Probably not a huge amount of talking, purely because I'm gonna chuck on Bushido brakes, uh, kilted, kilt, kilt Bushido's um, interview uh, in the background. I want to listen to that as well. So we'll get the time lapse going and we'll just, yeah, you'll just see me make up some fiberglass. Uh, we can talk about it afterwards, but ultimately polish, like we did, clean this up, polish it, uh, put some mold release on it, mix up, uh, cut some sheeting, fiberglass sheeting, mix up some resin, put it in, leave it, and then catch it tomorrow. So, um, yeah, should be a good one. Hopefully you enjoy me. I don't know how this is going to work out, so fingers crossed. Cue some shitty music. <sighs> Sorry there was no other camera angles. Um, so, weird thing, it feels as though the resin is thick. Jesus, I'm just gonna move this. I'm gonna just pull this back so it doesn't get stuck. Yeah, it feels as though the resin is really thick, which is not what I remember it last time I used it. I hope I've not got that in my luscious locks. I don't know if this shit goes off or not. Um, but that was an absolute mission. I just, it didn't, it felt like it wasn't saturated enough to get into the mold. And then when it was in the mold, 
it just got so thick and it was almost unworkable. Um, so if this works, I'll be surprised, but you can kind of see I was really fighting just to get it to follow the profile. Yes, this is a little bit big. Uh, it's still coming away because I just don't think it's got as much. So, I don't know. There's a profile in there. I'm going to trim away the excess stuff here just because I feel that that's maybe pulling it away slightly. So I'm going to trim away that excess stuff. Um, and then I'm just going to leave it set overnight. But yeah, it's a bit annoying. I don't really know what's going on with that. Um, if anyone's used it in the past, does that stuff go off? Um, I, hear, I think you can maybe put acetone in it to maybe thin it down a bit and make it a bit more workable but you put too much in it and it stops working so who the hell knows let's pick this up tomorrow and fingers crossed we're maybe gonna demo the mudguard if not i've just wasted everyone's time i'm sorry <laughs> fingers crossed so when i last left you the resin that i bought the resin that i had in the garage wasn't looking very good However, I still tried to make something with this and when you hold it, it's a bit sticky and it's probably not the end result that I would like. However, next day delivery from Easy Composites didn't actually show up on Friday. So, what I want to do is just shape this a little bit more, try and get it as though I would like to have used this. I'm, I'm going to make another one regardless, but just shape this and give us a nice little bit of filler for this video so that we know, hopefully, whatever this looks like, that mould is actually usable. One thing I have noticed since taking that bit out, I didn't record that, I didn't think it was going to turn out very good, but the mould itself, the Tulin gel coat has started to kind of deteriorate, whether that's because of the slippage that happened when I put that grey pish, as Andy uh, nicely called it, when that slipped off, I think I pulled some of the Tulin gel coat with it, leaving a much thinner Tulin, Tulin coat. So, whatever. So what I'm going to do now is, uh, this is obviously, I'm not really sure why, I trimmed away some of the excess, but I've still got wavy bits on this, which is a bit annoying. So I'm going to get a mask on. Well, first of all, I'm going to mark where I would like, where I would like this to, to be. Um, and then I'll get some curves marked on, how much I want to cut off each side to try and make it even, um, what kind of profile I want. And then from there, I think we'll get it on the bandsaw and we'll just see what it looks like. Uh, if anything, this is a good exercise to see whilst I'm waiting for other bits. It's a good exercise to see how I'm going to have to start mounting this. If I want to like mount that there, for example, where will these, where will the mountain points go? I think in about here probably. But. So good little, good little thing to to keep playing about with. So we'll get the time lapse set up and yeah, we'll just dick around, see what we can do. Enjoy. Okay, did that work? It did work. So, oh shit, try not to drop this. Ta da! Right, so we've got something that's actually not, not as terrible as we first thought. And this isn't going on the bike, this is just literally a, a means to have to see what we can work with. But I know the sides aren't as good as they can be. That's actually really difficult. Uh, if anyone's got any tips for that, trying to get a curve on the side of a curve um, so I can mark it and cut it and everything else. I think if you were to make these things from scratch out of metal, you would obviously cut the profile you want, cut the straight edges, and then whatever happened, happened. The shrinkage and, and expansion of the, of the expansion, shrinkage and stretching of the metal would cause that nice curve anyway. Whereas here, I've just tried to eyeball it, but and I, and I know it's not perfect, but anyway. Um, Actually, maybe it's just a little bit short. I don't know. Um, 
This isn't a million miles away from where I would like it though, to be honest. Maybe I would have liked it a little bit longer, but the back of the bike's quite short as well. Um, so, I think, I mean, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't really have had much room to have my, my mudguard further down than that because of this little bit on the shaft drive. It would kind of, it kind of needs to be sitting above anyway. So, what I might do is play about with this for a little bit, see if I can get some. Ugh. I know that's not perfect, um, but hindsight, I should have marked the underside because that was the easiest way to cut it. But the profile looks good. Um, just going to try something quickly. Ugh. That's too big for the, too big for the front. However, um. I don't know, that needs some work. Let's just focus on the back. One thing at a time, Struan. Try not to do too much. I'm so bad at that. I'm so bad at just like jumping between shit. Uh, as anyone who's watched my channel knows this. So, I mean, let's try and get the height of this sorted and then we can work back the way and see, see where we'd like this to be. I've got an idea. I, I'm blatantly stealing this from uh, 46 Works who had some stuff packed under his tire in his latest mudguard video uh, so I'm going to just try that see what, see what it looks like, see if we can get it packed down we'll stick it to the tire so it doesn't move and then we'll go from there so let's let's put it back on speedy up fast mode The lawyers coming in. How dare you listen to our music and have it for a split second in your video? Anyway, um, all is not actually lost with this, I don't think. Um, like I say, I wouldn't really probably want it much lower than this anyway. I'm not sure what people have done in the past. If anyone's done this differently and has experience of how far down to put this, for me, aesthetically, yes, maybe. Maybe if it had come down a little bit longer, but I'm at the mercy of being a lazy bastard not wanting to make another mould, which I'm sure some of you can understand. So if I can use this and get one last effort, uh, because of I don't know how good quality this is and everything else, if I can get one last effort. So before I mentioned I was going to make this out of, potentially make it out of carbon fibre, but reservations of making it in carbon fibre are... If you make something out of this, like you use this for carbon fiber, your 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 surface coat is exactly that. It's your your appearance coat. I can't remember what they call it, but essentially, epoxy carbon fiber is taken directly from the mold. So you want your mold to be as good as possible. Now you kind of want that to be the case for fiberglass as well. However, I'm not going to leave this ugly ass fiberglass mudguard. I'm going to paint it. I'm going to get it powder coated, turn up powder, I'm going to get primer painted and everything else so there's part of me that says if I'm going to try and make this I'll make remake it out of fiberglass again to make sure I'm really happy with it and maybe just leave it at fiberglass um, I don't know yet so that's uh, I need to wait on this stuff to arrive next week I've got next week off which is a good thing because it means I can get some more stuff done specifically on the bike so anyway back to this if we were to look at how this would be mounted that comes out nice a little bit past the tail, doesn't come too far. It's actually just in line with where I would need it to be, I think, visually. Um, how, how do I mount this to somewhere on the bike? Uh, obviously want it to mount on a point that this, the, the swing arm moves. Um, so this whole assembly moves up and down. My thinking is if I can take a bit of steel rod up that way, or even there's even a little point here behind that's not going to be getting the way too much. Might have to chuck the brakes on and see what happens there, but maybe a little point here. I can make a mount there. And I can either make another second mount off of this point here. Up, round, onto the centre. Onto the centre of this. And just have it single-sided. Because um, it's quite light. I don't think there's anything I can really add on the other side. Not really. Not without... Not without making some... Maybe welding a... A mounting point on which can be done but if I've got something I can use 
and it's fairly neat. I don't know. I mean, I can. When you look at this, you would probably wouldn't see this thing that I'm going to make on on that side. So there's a bit of thinking to be done with that. Um, how do you mount it? I'd like to have. I don't know. I quite like. Quite like the look of the mud guard. If you have a a nubbin on the top that ties to hold the mud guard in place, I don't know if that's very neat or not. I don't know. I need to do a bit of research on that. Um, I've got an idea that would work, but whether it's as neat as it can be, I'm not entirely sure. So, so yeah, um, all is not the end of the world with this. Uh, what I'll do is uh, probably make another one of these once all these bits and bobs arrive, but I just didn't want to get a, a video held up when I already had a pretty good uh, chunk of a video made already. So, in the meantime, probably the next video is going to focus on this. Anyone knows what this is? Put a link in the comments some of you will know but all will become clear in the next video so you won't have to wait long for that because like i say i'm off next week so this that'll be a little quick video a little teaser and um, i'll give you a clue it links a little bit with these led holders i've been making so till next time thanks very much for watching much less lag much less rag losing this time so that was always going to be more positive so uh, if you liked this video then please like it comment subscribe share with all your friends and we will catch up with you next time take it easy guys